Hey everybody. Uh, so, hello, I'm Megan. I'm your instructor for uh, Drawing 1, Art 102. <clears throat> and this is section W01. So we're reading in the summer of uh, 2022. You may have watched the uh, old um, intro video. I accidentally left it up. It's from last semester, which is fine. Not a ton has changed, except this is in the summer, so it's a little bit more truncated of a course. It's a little more compressed time-wise. So um, I just want to go through <clears throat> and just kind of introduce you to the course. So first of all, I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about how to navigate the course on Canvas. Then I'm going to introduce you to me. And then um, we're going to go over the syllabus, OK? So I'm sure most of you have taken classes on Canvas before or, or used Canvas in your seated classes. If this is your first time, it's no big deal. It's pretty easy to navigate. One thing I do want to emphasize is that I want you to um, navigate your course via this page. This is the modules page or the home page. They're the same thing. The reason I want you to do that is if you navigate by assignments, you miss all the pertinent information. Okay, so because this is an online class, um, I want you to get all the instructional information um, and, and not just go straight to the assignments because then you're missing all the things about how to do stuff and that's not super helpful for you. Uh, and it's kind of frustrating for me when, when, if you email me with lots of questions, um, which is always okay, but, but there are things that if you would have navigated through the modules and, and listened to the material and recorded material, you could have seen for yourself. So. Um, first of all, you have your materials list here. Um, if you're, uh, the best way to get your materials is just to go to the OTC bookstore here on the Springfield campus. Um, if you are out of town and that is not possible for you, then we do have a materials list here that you can check out. Um, if you'll notice, everything's grouped into these modules. So we have the welcome, uh, if you, you clicked here because that's where you're seeing this video. Um, and then we have a couple of assignments right off the bat. So one is introductions, which I'll talk to you a little bit more in a minute. You can see by this symbol that that's a discussion page. Okay, so you're going to post your um, uh, your introduction to yourself there, and you'll be able to see the post from your classmates, so you can get to know each other. Um, when you see something with a symbol like this, that's a page. That means it's informational. So you don't actually have to do anything, but you in terms of turning something in, but this is where you get all the instruction that tells you how to do things. So it's important that you click on those, right? So this one, um, most of the videos I use are my own videos that I record myself with my material. I do use a couple videos from other art instructors, um, just because if they do a good job, I see no reason to really reinvent the wheel. And one of the instructors I like is this Italian instructor named Leonardo. And so this is him showing us how to properly sharpen a pencil. In your case, you're going to use your X-Acto knife and your sandpaper from your kit. He also has a great video here going over different kinds of grips. So we know uh, this is a file. So this is just a uh, PDF of the materials list that'll pop up like that. So that's what the paperclip means. And then if you see this with the speech bubbles, that's a discussion. And if you see this page, that means that uh, it's a page and it has something important instructing you how to do something usually. After you sharpen your first pencil, and these are your graphite pencils in your kit, you'll take a picture of yourself holding your sharpened pencil, like a selfie with your pencil, so I can see that you uh, watched the video with Leonardo and actually did it. In each unit, often at the top, you'll have a page like this that's going to tell you information about what's happening in the unit. So I usually have a written description. Sometimes there's some reading uh, that's linked as a PDF, and it'll tell you what page things are on. Then there's generally a lecture video, which is me explaining to you what's going on. I do change my hair quite a lot. So in some of these videos, I have uh, purple hair, and some I have like dark kind of brunette hair. Sometimes I have pink hair. Sometimes I have blue hair. At the moment, I have kind of blonde hair. So they're all me. It's just me with different hairstyles because I've recorded them uh, during different semesters. Uh, sometimes I also have like a bonus video. And in this page, you're also going to see the assignments for the unit. And uh, it's important to click here and not just on the assignment link because here I show you examples of what these things look like. Um, it also gives you a little more information about each assignment. And there's a breakdown where I talk you through why we're doing each of these things and how they work. Okay? Um, so you have two kinds of, um, well, three kinds of assignments in this class. There's exercises, which are generally smaller. Those are usually worth 10 points. 
There's projects. Those are usually um, bigger, so they take a little bit more time, and they're kind of showing that you've mastered everything that you were practicing and learning in the exercises. And those are always done on our bigger paper. So in your materials kit, you have a small sketchbook and a large uh, pad of drawing paper. Exercises are on the small paper. Uh, projects are always on the big paper. Okay, I also have PDFs. Anytime I do a lecture or, or a, dem a demonstration or something, uh, where I have images in the background that I'm talking about in a little bubble like this on the side, I generally give you the PDF uh, so you can look through those images that I use as examples on your own time. Um, so each unit is kind of like this. We have at the top the informational thing that has the lecture or the demonstration and tells you how to do everything and kind of the overview. Then we have the PDF of that lecture and then we have exercises and sometimes we have projects and sometimes we have discussions. Sometimes I reference particular images uh, in my instructions and you'll be able to find those under the unit too. So you can find them there. So that's kind of how the class is set up in Canvas. So it's just really important that you make sure that you're not just going to the assignments, that you're going and looking at uh, all of the information that I provide. Okay, let's hop back up here and look at our introductions. So in your introductions for this class, oops, I've got an old date on here. I will change this date. So I want you to get this done before Friday, which is, I believe, the 10th. Um, this is the welcome message. So at the top, it tells you to go see the welcome message. You're clearly looking at it. Uh, and for this thread, I want us to help get to know each other. So in your post, I want you to tell me your name, especially if your name is different than it appears on Canvas, OK? So if, you, uh, if your name is Christopher and you go by Chris, tell me that. If you go by a completely different name than how it shows up in Canvas, tell me that. Um, and I do my very best to, to call you by what uh, it is that you want to be called. So, so, and I want our classmates, all of your peers, to be able to do that as well. So tell us your name. Um, tell us your pronouns. So my pronouns are she, her. Yours might be she, her, or he, him, or they, them. So let us know so that when we're um, discussing and critiquing each other's work, we can address each other how we want to be addressed and make sure that we're, we're doing this right. Uh, tell me your area of study. Now, you may not have a declared area of study. You might just be here getting your gen eds. You might just be taking stuff that sounds interesting, trying to figure out what you're going to do. You might be getting a uh, transfer degree. This might be something you're taking just for uh, your humanities credit. That's all totally fine, but just let me know what it is you're studying. And part of that is other people in the class might also be studying that, so you might be able to make some connections there. Tell me where you're from. Um, if you're from Springfield, tell me like what high school did you go to? I'm from Springfield originally. I went to Glendale. Uh, let's see, who is your favorite visual artist? It's okay if you don't have one. A, a lot of people don't. Um, if you do, let me know. My favorite visual artist, I have tons of favorite visual artists because I also teach art history, um, but my very favorite is probably Helen Frankenthaler. She's a abstract expressionist painter. She does really, really, really large scale abstract paintings. Um, a lot of people have like an anime or something that is their favorite kind of art. You could tell us that too, that'd be fine. Um, again, this is just kind of trying to get, a, get to know each other. Who's your favorite band or musician? Or who are you listening to a whole lot right now? Um, and then why you're taking this class. And again, that might just be because you need your humanities credit, which is totally fine and cool. And I'm glad you decided to take my class instead of taking someone else's class for that. But maybe why were you drawn to this particular class? Why drawing instead of, say, um, theater with John Herbert or music with Phil Forrester? We have lots of great instructors who teach things in the humanities. So what particularly drew you to drawing? OK. Um, so that's what you post here. And sometimes people, um, I'm very visual. I like images. So sometimes people like to post pictures too. So if you want to post a picture of yourself, you can. This is me. This is my hair last year. So like I said, I changed my hair a lot. I'm very like. Uh, very normal hair color <laughs> right now for me, which is kind of funny. So this is my headshot from the gallery that represents me. Uh, these are my kitty cats. I need to put a picture of my dog on here too, but a lot of times people like to see each other's pets, so you can post a picture of your pet if you want. And then this is my fa favorite artist, Helen Frankenthaler, uh, sitting surrounded by a bunch of her paintings. So if you want to post some images, you can. 
Okay, now the last part of this is I'm gonna tell you about me. So I'm gonna do a video version of my uh, introduction for, for this discussion. So my name's Megan, uh, and you can call me Megan. You're in college, you can call me Megan. If you don't like that, if that makes you uncomfortable, you can call me Ms. Rosen, you can call me Instructor Rosen, Professor Rosen, that's fine. Uh, but my name is Megan, my last name is pronounced Rosen. Uh, and if you email me or contact me, please don't spell my name incorrectly. I really don't like it. I know it's spelled strangely, but it is available to you here. So please don't spell my name incorrectly, and I will try very hard to not spell your name incorrectly either. Um, I use she, her pronouns, but I don't mind they, them. That's fine too. Uh, I studied art history, fine arts, and English as an undergraduate, where I got my Bachelor of Arts with honors. Then uh, I did studio art and theory for my first graduate degree which is a Master of Arts. And then for my final graduate degree, which is what we call a terminal degree for my field, which means the highest degree you can get in your field. For a lot of people, that's a PhD. For artists, it's an MFA. So I have my MFA, which is a Master's of Fine Arts, and that is in painting uh, from California College of the Arts in San Francisco. Um, I am originally from Springfield, and I went to Gr Glendale High, then I went to Drury. Um, I lived in Oakland, California for a while when I was going to grad school in San Francisco. Um, I moved back to Springfield in 2018. I have many favorite visual artists. I already told you Helen Frankenthaler is kind of my very favorite, but it's, it's hard for me because I, I love art and I love lots of different kinds of art. Um, I listen to lots of different kinds of music. Uh, I was listening to a lot of Fiona Apple. This is a little, this is from last semester. I just kind of copied it over. I still listen to Fiona Apple, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of all over the place with music. I've been listening to a lot of um, Childish Gambino lately. I just went back to Because the Internet, because I love that album. It mentions Oakland quite a lot, so it's close to my heart. Um, and I'm teaching this class because drawing is one of my specialties. Uh, I am full-time at OTC. So for a long time, for about 10 years, I was at Missouri State, uh, and I was an adjunct at OTC and also at um, Drury. I also taught where I went to graduate school at California College of the Arts um, as a teaching as a graduate student, as a teaching um, aide, basically. Um, but now I am full-time at OTC as of last fall, and I love it here. I'm super, super happy to be full-time here. Um, so here I teach Art History 1 and 2. Uh, sometimes I teach Art and Experience, though not very often. I'm the only person who teaches Drawing 2, so if you really like this class and you decide to take Drawing 2, you will see me again. Um, I also teach Portfolio Development, and occasionally I teach Foundations of Design. Um, I, like I said, have taught at MSU and Drury. Um, so I'm super happy to be here. I really like it. I live right up the street. It's, I love being in this area, so it works really well for me. Um, these are my kitties, Mimosa, who we call Mimsy. This is Uma, and this is Mr. Mustachios. And then I have a uh, one and a half year old Rottweiler, uh, who's a very big lummox of a dog, and her name is Marcy Moose. Okay, so that is me. Um, and that should give you a pretty good idea of the class. We are gonna hop over and just check the, the syllabus really quick. So you click on course syllabus to see this, and this will give you all the information that you need. Um, so this is an asynchronous online class. Asynchronous just means that we don't like Zoom at specific set times. It means you can access the information anytime you want. You'll notice that the embedded videos that give you all the instruction are connected to YouTube. I do have a YouTube channel that has all of my lectures for classes that I teach online available. I sort them by playlist. So there's a playlist for drawing one and two that just has all the things on it. But I will link them and embed them specifically in each unit where you need to find them on here. Um, to contact me, again, please don't spell my name incorrectly. I really don't like it. Um, email me. Uh, you can message me in Canvas because it goes to email, um, but I'm, I'm honestly better at responding to email also because of FERPA laws, which are student privacy laws that protect you. I can't actually discuss your grade with you unless you email me from your OTC email to my OTC email. That's a privacy law thing. Um, this is my office phone number. In the summer, I'm not in my office as often because I don't teach as much in the summer. I only have two classes this summer. I usually teach like eight every semester, so I'm just not here quite as much. Um, but you're welcome to call me and leave a voicemail. Also, you can email me to set up appointments uh, or to discuss anything with me. That's totally fine. My office is on the Springfield campus and it's in NKM and it's a uh, 130B. So it's on, on the first floor, kind of right next to the um, general education uh, division department. 
Materials, you do need materials for this class. So there's a specific kit for this class. You can get it at the OTC bookstore on the Springfield campus. Um, if you are at, if you're closer to one of the other locations, they might be able to send it to a different location for you. I'm not actually sure about that. I should find out. There's also materials list. So if you live out of town, you can just get the materials independently. Um, if you have financial aid, things that you buy through the bookstore, like your materials for this class, can be covered by fi financial aid. So that's a good way to, to do that. Um, you also do need internet access and a computer. Everything is done through Canvas in this class. Uh, description, this is just uh, basic drawing. Basic drawing techniques and vocabulary are what we learn in this class. Course objectives, we want to demonstrate the various drawing processes, acquire and demonstrate drawing abilities using varied mediums. Mediums are what you are drawing with, so graphite, charcoal, ink, we use all of those in this class. Um, I want you to increase your hand-eye coordination through drawing. Express knowledge of composition through the ex execution of pictorial development. That just means learn how to make things look good, right? Um, develop ability to literally and abstractly interpret forms in two dimensions. So this is an observation-based drawing class, so meaning that we're drawing things that we can see in front of us. Um, identify different drawing styles of famous artists. We do a little bit of that at the end of the semester, but that's not quite as important of an objective. Um, show acceptable standards of craftsmanship and presentation. These outcomes are the same. It's the core experiences, competencies. So you will see these in pretty much any um, gen ed division class you take at OTC. We want you to be able to communicate in writing and speaking. We want you to be able to engage in higher order thinking, like creative thinking, which is very important in a drawing class. We want you to be able to manage information. And we want you to develop your valuing skills. Grading is pretty standard. Um, a is 90 to 100%, B is 80 to 89%, C is 70 to 79%, D is 60 to 69%, and if you have less than 60%, you fail the course. Um, here is the breakdown of the course. Here are all of your points. So exercises are worth 10 points apiece, but we have 24 of them, so those add up pretty quickly. Projects are generally worth 30 points apiece. Uh, and, and those are also a, a big chunk of your grade. Your final project is worth 60, and then I have 150 participation points. I can see through Canvas how often you check stuff out. Um, I can see how much you interact in the discussions and that kind of thing. Uh, so I get participation points just if you're keeping up with the class, if you're getting things in on time, if you're commenting when you're supposed to be commenting, um, you'll get those points, no worries. Academic grievance. If something, uh, if you think, I've screwed something up or I missed something um, that you turned in and, and or I, I graded something incorrectly, please tell me. I try to be really approachable um, and I want to know if I messed something up, tell me and I'm happy to look at it again and, and work on it with you or explain to you why you received the, the grade that you did. Um, if you don't think I do a good job after you talk to me about it and you still think there's a problem, this is the contact information for my department chair. Her name's Kat Alley, and so she is my supervisor, so you can talk to her um, if, you, if you have any issue, and I put her contact information right there for you. Proctor and event, I don't have a proctor and event for drawing. Um, I occasionally will ask you to do something like with a pencil where you take a selfie of yourself with it so I can see that it's you who's doing the thing, and sometimes I have you submit images, usually on discussions where the work is in progress, so it's not finished yet, so I can see that it's your work that you're working on. I consider that kind of proctored because I'm seeing your process. Um, academic grievous, I mean, it's pretty hard to cheat in drawing, um, but if it looks like you're copying something that I can readily find on the image, I do occasionally spot check and reverse image search things. So just don't, you know, just turn in work that you actually do, and that's uh, no problem. Attendance, it's an asynchronous online class, so you do need regular attendance, but it's on your own timeline. So if you um, get behind in this class, it can feel a little overwhelming because there are a lot of exercises and projects. If you just keep up with the class, you should be fine, okay? And I will warn you if you're, if you're getting a little behind on stuff, okay? Um, administrative withdrawal does apply in this class, even though it's an online class. This is an OTC policy. If you um, miss class, if you've not attended class for 14 consecutive days, uh, you are administratively withdrawn from the class, and that's something I have no control over. Um, so don't do that. They can tell how often you log in. Uh, we can see that in the analyt analytics, and uh, Dean O'Connor, who's the one who oversees things like that, can see that as well. 
We have great support services at uh, OTC. Our disability su support services are pretty amazing. Um, if you need assistance or support in any way, please contact this office. They're really great. We also have tons of other resources. We have great academic uh, assistance. We have um, LGBTQ resources, OTC Cares. We have um, anti-harassment, anti-discrimination people. We have wonderful counseling resources. You can go get counseling for free as a student. Um, there's just a lot of really good uh, resources here. So if, if something's going on, um, you can reach out to me and I can help direct you to which kind of support uh, might be most helpful for you. But you can also just kind of peruse, these are links, so you can click on these and learn anything about um, the different kinds of services. I will update a complete schedule here. I haven't posted it yet, but also on Canvas, everything has its date. So you can kind of navigate just by that modules page, but I'll do a schedule and put it here uh, by the end of the week. Okay, fantastic. So excited to work with you all this summer. I love teaching drawing, it's super fun. And uh, I look forward to getting to know each of you. Have a great day.